When representing clients, a licensee may come across a client who wishes to remain anonymous. For example, a developer may not want the seller of a property to know who is submitting an offer on their property. Perhaps the developer is afraid the seller will demand a higher price if they knew this particular developer was interested in their property. The developer has a right to make the offer without disclosing his identity. If this is the case, the agent representing the developer must disclose to the seller that the buyer wishes to remain anonymous. Some may be tempted to write an offer in a fictitious name or a name other than the actual buyer. Remember the rules regarding misrepresentation. Criminal acts, twelve. Regardless of whether the crime was related to real estate, being convicted of a criminal offense involving moral turpitude within five years of the most recent application, including a conviction based upon a plea of no low contendere or a plea held in abeyance to a criminal offense involving moral turpitude. First, let's address moral turpitude. In very general terms, moral turpitude is conduct contrary to honesty or good morals. Therefore, this rule is dealing with crimes which involve actions which are contrary to honesty or good morals, similar to the competency and worthiness statutes we addressed earlier. This standard is vague and subjective. This allows the division and commission a substantial amount of latitude in determining whether or not a licensee should lose their license. The rule uses a few other terms which warrant explanation. No low contendere is Latin for no contest. A no contest plea does not require a defendant in a criminal case to plead guilty, but the defendant does not contest any of the facts of the case. A plea held in abeyance. Is another plea option for those charged with a criminal or misdemeanor offense. Let's illustrate with a traffic example. Let's say you receive a speeding ticket. The judge allows you to offer a plea held in advance. This means you must satisfy the terms of your plea. The terms of your plea may include attendance at traffic school and the requirement that you do not receive any speeding tickets for six months. If you satisfy the if you satisfy the terms of your plea. The charges are dropped. If you fail to satisfy the terms of your plea, a guilty plea is automatically entered on your behalf. Now that we understand the terms in this method of losing your license, let's review. The statute treats guilty pleas, no contest pleas, and pleas in abeyance similarly. Any such plea involving crimes of moral turpitude and the five years prior to a license application. May result in the loss of your license. You may be asking how one obtains a license in the first place if they have such a past. Some applicants do not disclose their criminal history accurately at the time of application. It may not be until a background check is complete before convictions are found. The licensee may already have been issued a license pending the background check. We will discuss the implications of failing to accurately disclose your criminal past in another course, but they are severe. Advertising, thirteen, advertising the availability of real estate or the services of a licensee in a false, misleading, or deceptive manner. This relates to honesty once again. However, it is specifically relative to a licensee's advertising. A licensee may continue to advertise a property which is no longer available, simply to produce prospective clients. This would involve deceptive advertising. A licensee may also represent the details of a property to make it more appealing to potential buyers. Supervision, fourteen. In the case of a principal broker or a licensee who is a branch manager, failing to exercise reasonable supervision. Over the activities of the principal brokers or branch managers, licensee, and any unlicensed staff, we discuss the importance and the ramifications of principal brokers failing to actively and reasonably supervise the activities of licensees affiliated with them. This clause highlights the liability which extends to branch brokers managing a branch of the real estate brokerage. It also includes the supervision of unlicensed staff. And the responsibility with which principal brokers and branch managers are charged, the commission and the division, fifteen, violating or disregarding the statute, 
in order of the commission or the rules adopted by the commission or the division. This clause is a catch-all. A violation of any part of the rules or law could result in loss of a license. The requirement to follow any order of the commission or division has an interesting implication. For example, let's assume the division orders you to provide certain documentation in connection with an investigation into your dealings. You fail to provide the documentation. You may be guilty of whatever prompted the investigation and therefore be disciplined accordingly. You may also be disciplined separately for failure to provide the documentation requested by the division.